Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. Number 88. Number 88. Tech Talk number 88. All right, let me do that one again. 88. That's how I get the three right there. Oh. I can't do the other kind. Okay, whatever. 88 Tech Talks. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we didn't we didn't have one. I'm like, there's, there's like 85 of them you could watch, and the information's all good. Yeah, so. most of it's pretty evergreen stuff. It is. Yes. But we got lots of evergreen stuff to mean. You've got some new stuff. I've I mean, got some new stuff. Yeah, the side the, the side you talk into the mic hasn't changed. Not at all. <laughs> That's a popular one. Yeah. I, I mean, they don't ask it, but believe me, it comes up. It does. Yeah, I have I have a piece of show and tell here. I'll tell you about a few new things I've got about the Apollo, and I'll mention um, Clubhouse hack for getting much better audio into <laughs> Clubhouse for those that still like to use Clubhouse on their phones. All right. Yes, we can get better audio. All right. Get your tech questions in now so George and I can answer them. We Please. love it because this is VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by voiceoveressentials.com the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products Source Elements the folks who bring you Source Connect JNC Demos when quality matters voheroes.com become a hero to your clients with award winning voiceover training voiceactorwebsites.com where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt voiceover extra your daily resource for voiceover success and by world voices the industry association of freelance voice talent and now here's your hosts dan and george hey there i'm dan leonard and i'm george woodham and this is voiceover body shop or vo bs tech, tech talk. talk tech talk Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. All righty. <laughs> the reason we do tech talk is because that's what George and I that's kind do. Of where it all started. Yeah. I mean, we've, it's always been about talking yeah. tech, but when we talk tech, everybody seems to want to hear what we have to say. So we said, well, why don't we just do a show about tech talk? And that's what we do. But the reason that we know so much about it is because George and I have been doing the home voiceover studio tech thing for a long time i mean we've been doing this show years. for 12 years but yeah. we've known each other before that and yeah. we were both doing home studio stuff before that so yeah. probably over 15 years yeah so about 30 yeah. combined years of of knowledge of going into people's closets and examining people's rooms and we've been focused on it yeah and it's amazing now we knew a lot when we started but imagine how much we've audio. learned yeah in that 15 years of us both doing this and peculiarities every, of small booths you wouldn't believe the things that we find <laughs> you know i got i had one today but we'll talk about it a little bit later mm -hmm. when I'm dealing with noise reduction and stuff mm -hmm. but if you want help with your home studio from people that actually know because there's no question about it we end up mopping up after people who you know say i have a friend who's a sound engineer or they said that I should do it this way. Right. Or my buddy, the voice actor, says he, he bought this mic. And it makes should him I sound get that great. mic? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. And, and it's, it's, all, it's all misinformation and disinformation and just outright confusion. ignorance and confusion. <laughs> so if you want to get help from the people that know what they're doing, you can work with one of us. And if you want to work with George, who has lots of great services and lots of great experience, where do they go? You head over to georgethe.tech. That's my home on the web and all the tech support services I offer from the sound check to studio design to acoustics tune-ups and processing presets and how do you audiobook master. It's all on there in a menu. Look through there. You might find something helpful. And Dan has his place on the web over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. I think that says it all. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just go on over there. 
First thing you'll see is my specimen collection cup at the top of the page, which has been running over the last couple of weeks, which is great. <laughs> People are like, it's hey, good, yeah. I, what does my audio sound like? You know, I'd like to hear your raw audio because a lot of times people send, here's how I process my audio. And I'm like, yeah. turn all that stuff off. You know, yeah. are you booking work with that? Well, I haven't been booking. Well, maybe you should turn some of that stuff off. Right. So I want to hear what your audio sounds like. That's going to be a big clue because in three seconds, I can generally go tell what's going on in your room because there's a lot of important things that you should be doing. And you'll send in your audio. I will analyze it, and I will tell you specifically where your shortfalls are. Mm -hmm. And if it sounds really good, I'm going to go, hey, it is good. How's the batting average been the last couple of weeks? As far as what you get versus what needs a lot of help. Well, you know, what, what needs versus what needs a lot of help versus what the ones you're like, hey, you're good. Everybody needs it. Yeah. Everybody. Not any, uh, nothing is perfect. And, now, yeah. and of course, you can never be perfect. But- I will show you how to make it perfecter er. Mm -hmm. anyway. I'd say like one in five. I get one in six, maybe. Yeah, where you're just like, you know, you're you're fine. Yeah, you could lower this noise floor a little, la, 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 or you could do it, but you're 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 good. Exactly, you're good. <laughs> and, I, and I'm the same way. And you're gonna you're gonna find that, you know, there's always something you can do. A lot of it has to do with technique. Yeah. It does not have a lot have mic to do. Technique. Mic, oh te mic technique. Mic technique is very, technique. very important. As I sit here practicing perfect mic technique. Yeah, well, I'm Hopefully. doing the shotgun mic technique. And I'm and doing the, the studio condenser mic technique. Right. There's a reason we do it this way, so you can see how it's supposed to be done. See? There you go. Uh, which is why our podcast sounds like a podcast is supposed to sound, as opposed to some of the podcasts that... That are video shows that turn into podcasts. podcasts right. Or our podcast done... Over a dining room table in a large room. With, yeah. It's like, yeah. I, I can't, you know, and they're 20 miles from the mic and stuff like that. <laughs> you, know. you know, perhaps we need to do a tech show about podcasts. If we'll it do comes a podcast up. about podcasts. If it comes up, yeah. How many podcasts are there about podcasts? Though? A lot. Anyway. So starting off with our tech report of the week, George, what do you got? Oh, not a whole heck of a lot, but I'll start with a little show and tell. Okay. This is coming from a brand that you'll never see us talk about on the show, and I never have on the show. Sterling, isn't, isn't that like the, the brand name from, from Banjo Emporium? We just discovered static electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it didn't shut off the poor, computers and Or Jacob just grabbed the doorknob and <laughs> you got a heck of a spark. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the Sterling Audio. Harmony H224, 24-bit, 192 kilohertz audio interface. Why did I get this? Um, is this camera featured now? Yeah. Sweet. Um, why the heck did I get this thing? Um, well, I was at there. I was at a guitar center to buy something much bigger, more expensive, a mixer for a client. And I always look to see what's in the case um, because things like this don't really come up on my radar unless you physically, or if you don't shop at guitar center, you won't find it, right? This is a house brand thing. Why did I like this thing? And I'll unbox it while I tell you. The first thing that caught my eye was just the, the, the industrial design of it. It just seemed like really a nice design. You know what I mean? Like Keep it simple so you know how it operates. Yeah, it's, they got away from putting all the knobs on the front. Here, right? They're on the top, right? So easy to see on your desktop where it's going to be. They provide for you, obviously, the usual two microphones with two mic gains. And they give you a really nice big knob here, a little reminiscent, a little reminiscent of the Apollo. Let's admit that, That's right? Okay. But that they give you a knob that it works a little bit like that. So this knob is at either headphone level or monitors level, right? It does both, or you can switch between the two and decide which one you're controlling. So that's that's nice design right there, but it still gives you proper physical gain knobs. Um, next thing is it you don't really ever use these in voiceover. But it does have pads, pretty unusual for an audio interface of this price. I think it's around 150. Well, I paid for it. I paid for it out of my pocket. It was 150 bucks. Um, but it's got pads on each channel, and the thing that really I thought was even more cool, it has high pass filters on each channel. Oh, um, there's very nice. nothing at this price point that I'm aware of that has high pass filters, right? Then it also has monitor control, so you can adjust. Um, whether you're monitoring at all, if you don't use headphones, you don't need it, 
or you can monitor mono or stereo. This is just like the Scarlet uh, stuff does now. And a surprise, it actually has, interestingly, two headphone jacks. It has one on the front right here. And then you can set up another headphone mix at the rear because it has two sets of headphones. It has two sets of monitor. line outs, yeah. monitor outputs on the back. So a surprising amount of features for something at this price point. Um, it has physical switches on the rear to switch between mic and line input, um, which if you want to use an outboard mic preamp with it, it seems like that will work better. And interestingly, it has MIDI. Not many people out there need MIDI, not many voiceover, but it's there in case you want to, you know, noodle away with a MIDI keyboard between sessions. So really impressive. Now, you're all wondering, well, how's it sound? I don't know yet. I literally just unboxed it on the show. So I'm going to uh, do some tests with it, plug it in, do some recordings. But I am sure that unless they severely botched this thing, which I seriously <laughs> doubt because Guitar Center knows what they're doing, I think it's going to sound just as good as all the other USB interfaces out there with similar specs. Um, I'm not Julian Krauss. If you know who he is, look him up on YouTube. That guy does the most elaborate videos, most elaborate tech reviews of audio interfaces you've ever seen. <laughs> it's really geeky. But anyway, I'm not him. I'm not going to analyze it like that. I'm just going to plug it in and use it sometime and see how it sounds. But anyway, that's something new on the radar. It's got, uh, got meters on it and everything. Yeah, ticket. Feel yeah. I mean, it's it just oh, that's feels, a hefty piece of equipment. It just feels it's not like go it, flying off your desk. No, it's even got like a really nice big rubber, huge rubber foot. Yeah, so really. it's not going to slide around when you plug things into it. You know what right. I mean? I, I gotta I gotta give Guitar Center props. I think it's really nicely designed and built piece of gear. So wow. next up is to actually try it out. So that's one thing. Um, I I, uh, <laughs> I came up with a new Apollo uh, hack. Um, universal audio polio interface um, that makes it work the way it's supposed to work with Zoom, the way I could never get it to work with Zoom, <laughs> the way, uh, you know, the way they're always telling you, oh, install loopback to make this thing work with Zoom, right? right. It was always a hack. Well, I finally figured out a good hack for it. And rather than keeping it a secret. Go for it. I put it right up on um, the UAD Forums website. So there is a UAD Forums and they finally, uh, Matt, the head forum czar, whatever like, czar. What his name that, is. That, that's a good word. The main admin over there. Yeah. Um, the head honcho. He finally uh, was able to make me our, my own, or make us, really, our own sub forum for voiceover. So if you are, if you are an Apollo user and you want to see where I'm going to be hanging out now and answering questions, it's over there at, Uni at UAD forums, uadforums.com. And look for the voiceover one. It's it's voiceover podcasting and live streaming. That's the category. And uh, I've posted a screenshot of exactly all the settings and how to use it. So what I want you to do, this is your homework if you have an Apollo, is to give it a try. Do what I said. Try it out. Test it in your setup and tell me, does it work for you? Or does something not work that I didn't think to test? or just works fine for me and not for you. So please do use that forum, ask questions, interact. I'm not putting any more time into my Facebook group. I'm, I want this to be in a more publicly searchable, not owned by Facebook property. So the forum is not owned by Universal Audio, to be clear. It kind of looks like it because of the branding on it. It's all sponsored by Universal, but it is still an independent entity. So you can go on there and ask and talk about whatever you like as long as it's on topic. So that's that. So that, that, that whole new way of using the Apollo that I feel like is a eureka moment after using one for 10 or 11 years, almost as long as Dan and I have been doing this show, um, I feel like I figured it out. I feel like I cracked the code. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds crazy, but <laughs> I feel like I cracked the code, yeah. So uh, anyway, give it a shot. Um, Lastly, I just want to mention Clubhouse. Now, Dan, do you find that you're still wanting to check out what's happening over on the Clubhouse app, or only is it kind of I'm, falling off your radar? Only if I'm asked to be on it. If you're invited <laughs> to be on a show like right. Jody Krangle's Power of Sound. Right. We've been doing that like the last three months, and that's fun. It's a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you and I tend to dominate it. The other guys are like... Yeah, I told Jody, I was like, <laughs> I apologize. We tend, hey, we host shows. What do you, it's natural. Right. We this know how to fill time. 
Um, but uh, anyway, Clubhouse, uh, if you're not aware of what it is at this point, um, it, which you know many of you may not be, it's its own social media that's audio-based, really, essentially. There's no... They've added in a thing called a back channel, which actually is sort of a chat, mm -hmm. but it's really all about audio. And it's like people are hosting radio shows, call-in shows, where literally anybody can call in. Right. Um, anybody can be a host or, and anybody can run one. And so it's extremely democratic. Um, as of for now, there are no advertising, which worries me. I don't know how this company is going to stay in business. Uh, but it, it's really a fantastic thing. I have been tuned into it a lot when I have downtime to listen to people talk about what's going on over in Iran, the uh, whole hashtag Masa Amini movement that's going on over there. I'm not going to get into the politics of it, but there's a, there's been a nonstop discussion on there live of people hosting and taking questions and talking for about seven or eight days, like just nonstop. It's quite amazing. Anyway, so that's what Clubhouse is. I'm starting to do one as well. I'm going to call it the ask me anything, you know, once a, once a month, it's going to be the second, no, the last Tuesday of the month at 3 PM. That's the planned date and time. Anyway, so that's all about Clubhouse, but a lot of folks want to get better audio into Clubhouse. I mean, yeah, you can just use an iPhone. You can just use AirPods and it works and it's great. Like you can go, for, like I literally went from driving in the car from a client with AirPods walked in my house, sat down and just kept on going. And it was basically seamless, right? Um, but yes, you can use Clubhouse with pro audio gear. There's just a few little tricks and I'll leave one or one solid one and I'll tell you where to see Good, more. Good, because I need to know this because I have to keep <laughs> doing it on my phone. Yeah, so the, the annoying thing is iPhone and the way Apple designs it, and Byron Wagner did an extremely thorough job of explaining this, so I'm just copying what he said. Um, but... Um, the problem is that the, the, anything that's hands-free mode, mm -hmm. like uh, anything that's re for, for conversation, phone calls, clubhouse, Zooms, anything where it's communication-based, not listening to music, mm -hmm. the phone switches modes into hands-free mode, essentially. Not every device can be detected as a hands-free device. That's the problem, right? right? So um, the trick is, what Byron said, is you need to find devices and adapters that have MFI, as part of the naming on the box or branding, which really means made for iPhone or iPad or made for iOS, basically right. MFI. You need to have that compatibility in the product. Even if the product still records and works, if you don't see that logo, it may not work as a hands-free device. That's one thing. Two, the universal adapter that will guarantee to get audio in and out is those little tiny headphone dongly things that iPhone gave you the first, the first year they took away the headphone jack, they gave you these little adapters, right? They didn't give them to you. You had to go and buy them. Not even the very first generation they didn't give it to you? I know. My wife is like, hey, I, I can't listen. I can't charge my phone and listen to it at the same well, time. Well, that's true. That you know, is So annoying. you had to have that little dongle. That yeah. So that. anyway, they still sell them for 10 bucks. Now you can get a better quality one. But, but anyway, what it does now is basically it gives you your headset jack back. Once nice. you have that headset jack, all you have to do is have the right cables and adapters to get audio in and out of that little jack. And it's called a TRRS connector, right. tip ring ring sleeve. So um, there's a lot more to it. <laughs> I don't want to take away too much time from the show. I suggest you jump over to my Instagram, George the Tech, and watch the video I posted on Friday. And I did a show and tell of several different methods you can use a sentence portcaster for example right. for the for the premium experience a roadcaster pro which has a trs jack on it i like the irig kind of went through a range of different adapters and and techniques that you can use but um i'll try to remember that next month when we're on with jody and yeah i've been putting more and more on instagram it's got a little it gets a little more engagement it's a little more people gets people commenting and uh i would have shown it on the show it's just it's it's literally it's vertical it would have looked really dumb on YouTube. It's a vertical <laughs> format. But uh, you can go check it out and get some more detail about how, how that all might work for you. Great. Super. Awesome. That's... That does it for me. Now we're going to talk noise reduction. Yeah. because I, I got an email this morning from somebody who says, I'm brand new at voiceover, mm -hmm. uh, but I have tried everything. I live in a 500-square-foot apartment, 
and there's an air conditioner I have no control over. It's yeah. noisy. There are other noises in there, and I've tried. I've gone into a closet. It still isn't very good. Yeah. What do I do? And I'm like, well, you have essentially two, maybe three options. Mm-hmm. Number one, you live where you choose to live. You can move. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes to hear that one. But. No, nobody likes to hear. I like where I live. Well, if you want to be a voice actor. You know, if you're in the landing path of Bob Hope Airport, that's a problem. The recording studios here in Studio City didn't choose to put Bob Hope Airport there. No, they did not. (laughs) No, they went there. But they also have very expensive studios that are floated. Million plus multi-million builds. Almost a million, I'm sure, to make them them the way they sound. Well, Ben Pronsky's garage, that was not a million dollar project. But it was... You know, percentage way of over a hundred thousand. <laughs> I can tell you that. Watch, watch that episode. That yeah. was that was very revealing. That's what it takes to get quiet. But he was trying. I think the mistake is always looking at. Oh, I can put up blankets. I can put up foam. It's soundproofing blankets and foam. Right. It's That's not how it's guys, branded on eBay and Amazon. yeah, and they are not soundproofing blankets. They are sound absorption and diffusion devices that prevent reflection i think we say this like every week sure but it needs to be it bears repeating there is the soundproofing and sound treatment are not the same they are completely different concepts but you got to have both yeah Mm -hmm. one of the things he said i tried a chaotica eyeball Mm -hmm. not that i want to promote the chaotic uh chaotica eyeball because i don't it sucks they can sue me. It just doesn't work. It's not designed for voiceover. If you want a, if you want a chaotica eyeball, because I think they gave more away than they than they did, yeah. uh, you, know, you know, than actually sold them. Although some people bought them, great for volleyball at a voiceover conference, but not, <laughs> but not for doing it. You know. And then Uncle Roy was like, "Well, if you shove bagels in it, that helps a whole lot too." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, first it was, you know, sweat socks. Then I'm like, oh, let's try bagels. Bagels, you know, I guess they worked a little bit better. Diffusers. But yeah. It, none of these things mm-hmm. prevent noise from the outside from reaching Mr. Microphone. Mm-hmm. And therefore, or Mrs. Microphone, or Ms. Microphone. Ms. Or I don't want to be sexist about it. That's right. Um, but I, look, you can move. You could build something, but you have to use the right materials. You have to use good construction technique. And chances are, since you don't understand what it is that prevents sound, you're in big, big doo-doo anyway. So the last thing is noise reduction strategies. Right. Most Di- programs you mean have digital, digital, dig- digital no- yeah. noise reduction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I end up doing this a lot with podcasts because... People mm-hmm. have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. Podcasts. Yeah. It's it's a matter of simply, you know, you know, can you remove the sound of a fire engine? Can and police cars going by and the traffic on Fifth Avenue because they live in a midtown. I'm like, you don't do that. But if you do, they send the stuff to me and I gotta clean it up. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of time and effort. You have to know how to use these noise reduction things. Now, in Twisted Wave... You also need to be able to hear the destruction that they cause... Exactly. ...when used incorrectly, right? Right. They have to be set perfectly, and you have to have a noise floor. You know, we set that standard up at least below minus 55 to minus 60 to make something seamless in the mm-hmm. way you use noise reduction. You mm-hmm. know, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people using noise gates lately. And, you know, early on we would say, yeah, use a noise gate, but it has to be seamless. Using the right, you if you to... use the thing like in Twisted Wave or in Adobe Audition or even Audacity has this now, they're better than they used to be. You mean the noise reduction, the thing right. where you Take highlight, a, the, right? You highlight, you room create tone, a, a, a a noise a, print, a noise profile, right? A profile, yeah, and then apply it to the entire file. Yeah, it does a pretty good job, but if you're auditioning for a commercial there ain't a producer out there that wants to hear any of that stuff. And they, they, they know what it sounds like. Oh, uh, like uh, unless absolutely. you use a very like 5% reduction, they're going to, they're going to hear it. They know. Exactly. Yeah. So move, 
<laughs> Find move, a better place to live. Move or get a not, loan. Or, or get a loan and, and build a... The thing is, is you don't get a booth if you're just starting out. Yeah. And if you're just starting out and you're in a noisy place, I also suggested perhaps you have some voiceover friends nearby who have a yeah. better facility. Yeah. And perhaps you could borrow that until you make some money and then you can move. Listen, here's the guy, here's the thing, guys. I just acquired a voiceover booth of my own. I know it sounds crazy, but I just now is? finally have one. <laughs> and I'm not telling you where I live. <laughs> and um, my daughter, you know, I've always thought, oh, maybe I should get my kid into voiceover, <laughs> right? Duh, right? Yeah, have her pay that, you know. But it wasn't until I had the, the proper space to do it, a booth in my apartment, in my office, that I had that confidence that I can put her in there put the mic up. Of course, I know what I'm doing. It's my job, right? But I didn't have the confidence in getting great sounding audio consistently until I had that in my studio. I made that investment and put it in there. And um, yeah, the better you are in voiceover or the more, let's just say, the more in demand you are, the more you can get away with things. That's so the more, the more famous you are, or the more high up the food chain you are, you can get away with a lot, right? Right. But when you're trying to get started, they're judging you about sound quality the first two seconds of the audio before they even judge your acting is how do you, how do you actually sound? You don't want the sound, the quality of your sound to distract from your performance. Yeah. You don't want that to be the reason that you don't get hired. Right. Weeded out for sound quality. Ugh. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, I could demonstrate some of this stuff, but just go through the, the menus and, and try it out and see if that works. And listen, you. listen, listen, use headphones, good headphones. Listen to the dry audio, listen to the processed audio, listen to what was there before, or what's gone now. Exactly. And if it ain't just the noise, but it's also some of the frequencies of your voice, or you sound slightly robotic or unnatural, go back and try again. Yeah, undo turn, and turn it down. You know, undo and redo, test again. You know, wet, dry, you know, that's. Yeah, if it's got a blend control or if it's got a percentage or anything, go lower. Even try a second pass. Uh, I've heard that can work yeah, well. I, I've done Less, that. but double, double it up. So. Right. Use sometimes, your ears. Sometimes three times. Use your ears, everybody. You know, once you like compress it and you know, and, and mm -hmm. all those sorts of things. Well, now the noise is louder. Well, now I got to take that out. <laughs> Just record it right the first place. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna take a break, and we got a pile of questions that we want to answer. So it's time mm -hmm. for a lightning round. So we'll be right back here on Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk. Don't go away. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voiceover Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. Vobs TV. Headphones for voiceover? Why not get the headphones made for voiceover? That's why I use Harlan Hogan's Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 from voiceoveressentials.com. Harlan's cans are incredibly strong and lightweight. At only 8.4 ounces, the combination's straight coiled audio cable stretches from 5 to 10 feet. It comes with two gold-plated mini plugs and a studio standard quarter-inch screw-on adapter and includes the new mini jack on the left headphone for easy cord replacement. The studio monitoring headphones are optimized for voice work. Now even better, the Harlan Hogan Signature Series VoiceOver Headphones 2.0. And for a limited time, when you buy the headphones, you'll also get a free autographed copy of Harlan's best-selling book, VO, Tales and Techniques of a VoiceOver Actor, 2nd Edition. It's full of stories from the trenches and insights about making the most of your voiceover career. Go on over to VoiceOver Essentials right now and order yours. It's that time on the show where we thank Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, the most predominantly widely used remote recording tool in the voiceover business. Completely has taken over for ISDN. If you don't know what ISDN is, don't worry about it. But it's gone. It is gone. <laughs> but ISDN was how studios tended to connect to their best and most well loved and highest paid clients um, because it was easy for them to get great audio. Now with Source Connect, it's even easier for producers to get great audio straight into Pro Tools, which is what they are going to be using most of the time, probably at the studio. The workflow is efficient, and that is why they love it. So you want to have this tool in your toolbox. You want to be proficient. You might even consider paying them, I think it's $75 for the certification, which isn't just like paying for a little badge. They actually teach us stuff. They will actually 
go through your system. They will make sure your system is set up properly. They will, if there's some issues with the sound, they actually will give you some advice to make it better. It's, it's a very worthwhile expense to make sure that your quality is where it should be for Source Connect. So just another way they provide great service. So you can go over to source-elements.com, get yourself a demo, poke around, watch the videos, spend some time, and then when you're ready, subscribe or pay for your license outright and own it for life. You can do that right over at source-elements.com. We'll be right back. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Well, now I'm totally intimidated. Yeah. Anyway, we have a pile of really good questions here. Mm -hmm. We live for this. Every two weeks, we get together just to answer these questions. So let's get to work on them. Let's get to it. And and our first question is from our actual chat room monitor, who always has good questions, because and he's, which is why he hangs out with us, because he figures by osmosis he's going to learn all this stuff. And he's got control, baby. So That's, he put it at the top and bold. bold. Bold types. Is, what is the best position for a shotgun mic to reduce mouth noise? Mm. What are the three best positions for a shotgun mic? Mm -hmm. Your shotgun mic. Yours right here. That's actually my shotgun mic because this is my studio and that's I my 416. Yeah. He didn't bring his. George looks to be at a much deeper angle than in your home studio and in front of you rather than coming from the side. Well, this is how George and I use a 416. That's the proper way. Describe how you do this so there's no mouth noise or no well, it, mic it, pops it, or anything. I like think that. it reduces, well, Pops are no problem because the plops, pops go straight or kind of go down. So right. you're not going to pop the mic like this. Um, in terms of distance from the mic, you know, Dan and I are getting to work longer distances like you would have more like in a pro commercial studio for a good reason. Dan's got a 10-foot vaulted ceiling in here, right? Right. We have a large high ceiling above us. It's highly treated with acoustical clouds. And we're seated, so we're not even close to the ceiling. That allows me to have the mic way up here, which looks face a lot better on camera, right? right? Which is what it's designed for, by the way. Yeah, it's an on-camera mic. You want to get warmer, then you can choke up on the mic, and it's going to get a bit warmer and more present sounding. But we don't need to here too much. That could almost be too much. So, um, yeah, so in terms of its position, its angle is... Uh, you know, it's 60 degrees, yeah. maybe. It's a pretty steep angle. Um, but I also did this because I wanted to be able to move around a little bit more. Um, you know, when you're doing VO, you're, you're kind of locked on your script. And here I'm like looking at this camera. I'm looking at my laptop. I'm looking at Dan. So I'm moving all over the place. So I'm choosing a little bit steeper angle. That prevents me from moving off mic too much. That's, that's you're wondering why I'm doing it that way. That's why. Um, and you mentioned our, what are three best positions for a shotgun mic. Well, that I one. guess this is number one. <laughs> um, number two might be uh, if you're in a small space and you want to, the camera, you still have a webcam and you don't want the mic blocking the camera, then maybe more like over here. Similar thing coming at you from 45 to the horizontal, 45 to the, uh, what axis is that? <laughs> left or right <laughs> <laughs> to the left or right um is a, is a, another good position a, thir a third position i don't know i guess if you want to sound announcery 
Maybe you come more directly Direct in. on and you use a, a pop screen. Before. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe you get it in tighter and get, and to get that really announcer voice of authority, whatever kind of, of, of sound. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a great versatile mic because one, it has great side rejection and a very narrow pickup pattern, which can mm -hmm. save you if you're in a marginal place and instead of moving, get a 416, which is about two months rent or in LA. A half your rent. Yes. <laughs> sort That's of. about right. <laughs> um, but, a third. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, is if you're doing like promo type stuff, you, that it was people just, you know, jocks discovered, Hey, you can talk straight into it and it makes you sound really great. Yeah. You still never promo. really want to, you never really want to do right at the microphone because right. that will magnify mouth noise right. and make plosives a nightmare. Right. And then of course it has that foam sleeve that you can put on it which is essentially for outside. It's really, yeah, it's really meant to be used it's in not, a, not in a great a, and reduce it. Another, another reason those windscreens are used is for boom operating. When they actually swing the boom from actor to actor, they need that on there right. so you don't literally hear right. <laughs> they got, swing the boom around. And they've got these covers. One looks like a blimp and then one they call a cat. Yeah, well, they call it a dead cat. Oh, a dead cat. <laughs> That's okay. what it's called. Shh, sorry. Yeah. Mention. Sorry, cats. We love cats. Uh, <laughs> Tom okay. Machen has a question. Go for it. All right. Considering it is a business, where do you place your very limited energies for an audition when you're all, you, when you're ill and have no energy? This is especially important when your agent says, uh, you're in the top two already. This may have been directed to our uh, guest last week, but uh, you can Alden. certainly speak to this. Yeah. Uh, where do you place your very limited energies for an audition when you are ill or have no energy? Oof. Mm. I've done it. Well, I think any pro does it at some point. Right. I mean, you know, heck, I had COVID, but I was able to, you know, you learn to control your voice and you know what your limitations are. And use it as little as you can. And you too, use right? it as as little as possible. Fortunately, when I got it, it was just you know in my septum, and you know it made me a little more raspy, mm -hmm. but it didn't get into my vocal cords. If it gets into uh, your vocal cords, you really are out of business. Yeah, I mean there are some people that can you know that can that can pull it off, but generally, if you if if it gets into your vocal cords and you start getting swollen vocal cords, you can't reproduce that later on as an audition. So, you know, if you're doing audiobooks, Gotta wait till you're better. You can't you can't do it differently. So mm -hmm. I would highly suggest if you're sick and it gets into your vocal cords, it's like you'll have to excuse me for a bit. It's in my vocal cords. Yeah. And you do not want to hear yeah. me like this. Yeah. And you just have to be honest about it. And if you get sick, I people need to get past the idea of well, if I can't do it, somebody else is gonna do it and they're always gonna get the job and I'm out. You, you can't think like that. Yeah. Everybody gets sick, therefore, just learn to relax about it and not fret about it. You're sick, you're off, you're, you know, you're on vacation from you're getting a work. forced vacation, you're getting right. forced vocal rest, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Terry Briscoe asks, Is there a way to make my basement ceiling more sound deafening without tearing out the drywall? Sound deafening, oh, so preventing sound from getting through. Let's assume it means deadening. Deadening. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. That's All what right. I think so. All right. But how do you get rid of uh, sound <clears throat> sound deadening? So when you're in the basement, what do you hear in the basement? The from upstairs? furnace, toilets flushing. Yeah. Every, every All the mechanicals are down there. Well, what do you hear upstairs? Footsteps. Right. Footsteps. Footfall. Especially people wearing bestad clogs <laughs> and stuff like that. Okay. You remember bestad clogs. <laughs> Yes, uh, I don't, but uh, yeah, I, I can imagine. <laughs> Even regular shoes sound pretty bad through yeah. a floor. Um, I hate to tell you, Telly, Terry, that that is definitely one of the most expensive and challenging things to st eliminate is footfall noise from upstairs. It's quite difficult and it requires absolutely tearing out the drywall, <laughs> I hate to tell you. And putting in what? In putting in a uh, a whole plethora of things, <laughs> layers of insulation with MLV, and then another layer of MLV and mass loaded vinyl. Sorry, I'm using too much jargon. Mass loaded vinyl, and then some ISO, and then you tape that off and make it airtight, so you have an airtight membrane, and then you add some isolation clips, and then you put in your hat channel, 
and then you put on a layer of drywall, and then you put on another layer of drywall, and when you do all that right, you will get rid of it mostly. Or you move. <laughs> Or, or move to a or different you move, place or you have to, or you go to a different part of the house, a right. different part of the basement. Right? I have a client who's moving to a new home. It's a big rancher with a huge basement. Oh, fabulous! And uh, he was like, "I want to be here." And I said, "Well, what's right above you if you're here?" And he's like, "Oh, that's the that's the master bathroom upstairs." I'm like, "Okay, that could be a little bit noisy at times. How about if you're over that corner, way over there?" Oh, I didn't think of that. Well, what's under that corner? That's the master bedroom going to be pretty quiet when you're in your studio. That's carpeting and all right? that. There's not going to be much going on up there. Right. So, um, yeah, so that's the kind of things you think about when you're, but yeah, tearing out the drywall, I hate to tell you, that is definitely part of the plan if you got severe upstairs noise. All right. All right, this next question is a question for George because I could care less. <laughs> I, I, well, I can hear the difference but I don't think there's a difference. Well, I'll tell you head. what the difference is. Okay, I'll but just, let's ask yeah. the question okay. here. From, okay. yeah, Grace at Newton asks, what is the difference between the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pro mm -hmm. and the DT770 Pro headphones? Why would there be a 20-point difference between the two? Yeah, right. <laughs> or uh, it, the difference is the design. One is what's called a closed-back headphone. That's the 770, and those happen to be one of my favorites, and I've been using them for 25 years almost. And then the 990 is what's called an open back headphone. And you might look at the two next to each other in pictures and go, wait a minute, they look almost the same. Um, but the 770 has a hard plastic shell on the back. The 990 actually has like a vents, like a, there's venting or screen right. that the sound can pass through. And those that prefer open back, find that they, they feel that they're more natural sounding or more real sounding. Um, but the downside is that the sound does actually leak out. Right. So you don't want to use them for voiceover directed sessions. Like if you're doing source connects and things like this, right. that would be bad because that they'll actually hear them talking to you and playing your themselves. And then they'll, they'll hear that leaking out and going right back into the microphone. So that's bad. But for just monitoring, listening, playing back, or just enjoying great sounding classical music, the open back is a more theoretically accurate sound. I'm very used to closed back. I've grown used to them. That's all I've used because that's all it's been really practical. And here's a couple options. Here's the Harlan, the Harlan Hogan headphones are closed back. Right. And they, and they sound great. For good reason. And they're, and they're very flat. Which right. means, you know, they're not, the response is going to be hyped or bass heavy right. or whatever. It's what you sound like, yeah, which is really why you want those. Audio Technica for, these are the 40s, H40s. And um, they are very, again, very similar in terms of not hyped up too much in any one frequency. Um, but uh, that is the difference. All righty. Uh, Terry Briscoe asks, what are your thoughts on the Deity S Mic 2? Uh, I don't have any yet because I, I haven't used it. Or I The guy that either. runs that company is a unique gentleman. I met him at a podcast convention. He was he, he's the CEO, the designer of the mics. He does all of his own YouTube videos. He's, he's, a, he's, he's an enthusiastic fella, knowledgeable, That's and, uh, and makes a very affordable product. Um, but I haven't been able to do real proper, real-world tests where I compare these... Uh, with with other tools, so right. I, I don't want to answer without having tried the mic and myself. I, didn't we test one once? I feel like we did. Yeah, I'll have to go back and that's one of the earlier episodes. But second part of the question, if you're and it seems to be a non sequitur question, because it says, if you're using proper mic technique, do you need a high pass filter? Well, one doesn't have to generally do with the other. Yeah, well, yeah, some people use a high pass filter to reduce the pickup of plosives. Mm -hmm. Right. which is fixed with better mic technique, I guess. Right. But the main reason we use high pass filter is yeah. so the mic doesn't pick up all that rumbling, rumbling, which is blah, 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 blah. in your house, in your apartment, it's in your environment, it's always there. Right. And if it's below the frequency of your voice, then you can use a high pass filter. You know, it's I've, the residual radiation from the big bang. Is that what it is? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just always there and you can't stop it. <laughs> Let's right. just put it that way. It's just always there. <laughs> and, so that's, and it's, that's and why. It's been there we... for billions and billions of years. 
<laughs> yeah, so mic technique is part of the equation, but really it's not about mic technique. It's just correcting that that background right. noise, low frequency noise level stuff. Okay, you get the question from John O'Rourke. Okay, um, when you have a booth made of PVC and studio blankets, is it still a good idea to add more absorption panels? And if so, how would you do it? Well, it depends. Yeah, it kind of depends on the quality and the type of studio blankets you're using. Some of them may be a little more reflective than others. Some of them are very thin, so they don't do a great job on their own. Um, the producer's choice blankets and the blankets that we happen to use for Tribooth, uh, the Tribooth studios are very, very absorbing and very dense. So we don't need to add anything. Um, but yeah, you may find that in your, in your case, adding a good quality absorber over top, like a Oralex foam panel or something like that will, will increase the, the, the result or increase the overall re sound result right. from the recording. And the thing is, if you have a booth like that and you want to know if it's enough, send us a sample. You get a sound check. Do a sound check with George. Do my specimen collection cup. Let us listen because we know what it's supposed to sound like. Yeah, that's how you're going to know. Because if you don't know, then you don't know enough about your own sound to make that judgment. You need someone else to help you do that. And right. That's what we do. That's what we do. Uh, okay. Have we tested the Logitech Blue Sona? Thomas Evinger asks that. I, nope. I, I think you Brand mentioned new. it once. It's like a, a, a joint project between Logitech you know, webcams and Blue microphones. Yeah, apparently but, the joint part is Logitech bought Blue. That would explain it. <laughs> so I, I knew it was in that's my what head I heard. somewhere. Yeah, I just heard that. Uh, um, yeah, no, I, I I checked it out. There's they've they've sprayed them across the YouTuber verse, so there's a bunch of YouTubers using them already, and it sounds pretty darn good. Um, it's a dynamic mic that has phantom power. Um, that's its little that's its little thing. Um, it looks cool. It looks cute. Kind of looks like a very space aged version of an SM7B. It has a big like yoke that it hangs from, and you can right. twist it, and, or you can aim it. Um, I, but yeah, I don't remember on more distinctive details about it. But I haven't tried it. And the whole idea about it being a dynamic mic is it's designed for a more of a voice, a more of a broadcast podcast situation. Right. So it was intended to be used cool. right up like this to get that broadcast sound. But it's dynamic, so it's not as sibilant and mouth noise sensitive as a yes. microphone like this yes. and our guest tonight is we're going to be talking with uh, yeah it's that. you can hear aesthetically the difference right and if, that's if exactly. eating the mic versus getting a natural sound yeah. don't eat the mic unless the specs say eat the mic and i've never seen that <laughs> so, anyway. yeah yeah no we'll, we'll maybe one of them will end up uh coming across our desks yeah. One of these days. Now, here's an interesting question from Jonathan Grant. He mm -hmm. says, heads up and a repetitive problem. <laughs> Focus right Scarlet 2i2 with a Mac. Okay. Mm -hmm. When the system sleeps, the 2i2 receives lower power. That's okay. right. With only the 48 volt uh, light lit. Mm -hmm. All right. So the fan power is on. Mm -hmm. System wakes and the power levels are restored and all selected lights are lit. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. the buttons on the 2i2 are unresponsive and noise is introduced into the recording. Unplug and reset the 2i2, and the problem is solved. Problem solved. Oh, there's more. Only solution is to allow the monitor to sleep, but not the Mac. It sucks, and I want to upgrade, but to what, SSL2? I don't I, know if that problem will go away with the SSL2, but I haven't tested it. I have not either. You know reason why I haven't tested it? Because I tell literally every single voiceover actor who is listening to me to disable sleep. Um, I know you don't want to hear that, um, but that's the case. Um, anything that's USB powered, all has the same suffers a similar fate. The dro the voltage drops, or not finding the voltage, maybe the amperage yeah. current drops, going out to the device, and the device goes and it freaks out for a while, and then when power comes back, it goes bananas. Um, so I I don't know if the SSL two would be affected by that that uh, that fate. Or not? I haven't played with it, but yeah, this is this has been a problem as as long as USB audio devices have existed. Um, sleep causes lots of trouble. So yeah, just sleep your displays. If you're on a Mac, 
um, if you're really about being conservative on your power usage and you have an M1 or any of the new Silicon Mac, don't even worry about it. Those computers, when they're working their damnedest, and use 10 do. watts. Right. 10 watts. My Mac Mini at full blast is 10 watts, right? right? And it's of course, you can minimal. always turn your computer off. Yes, you could and turn your computer which will off. totally reset everything. Yeah, I never do that. I never do either. <laughs> I leave it on my, all the time. My Mac Mini's been on for like years yeah. since I bought it. When I things think. go weird, we restart our computers, right? But um, <laughs> no, I, I I tend to leave it on because I want to sit down and be right at work. I I'm impatient, I uh, and I walk down, sit down, and I walk in, sit down. And I want it to be ready. Um, but uh, yeah, I just don't sleep. And um, if you do get an SSL two, which you should just get one anyway because it's just better than the Scarlet, um, let us know. Yeah. I had a situation with an SSL2 uh, last week. A young lady has, wires had been drawn underneath the floorboards. Ooh. And, you know, she went from a sure, you know, SMU to whatever that thing was and got an SSL2, went through two hubs and then was wondering why it was skipping. Oh, yeah. Why were we getting dropouts? I'm the like, more well, it's extended and goes through hubs, right. the I'm more... Like, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, you need... it. The SSL2 runs off a USB-C, t- uh, you know, double mail connection, and that's what you got to use. And, and you can't go terribly far, maybe 10 feet? Well, we found... I We found a cable that was 20 feet, and uh-huh. once we plugged that in, that was worked great. Oh, good. But, but we couldn't get it under the floor, and she uh-huh. didn't want it going under the rug and up. Uh-huh. You know, that's uh-huh. so, so uh-huh. what we did is we got a, a line with a an adapter mm-hmm. that ran about 50 feet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still worked. A line with an adapter. Yeah. So apparently there's enough juice that runs through the five watts that that thing will send out over uh-huh. USB-C, uh-huh. and it powered the SSL too. So oh, she so was it's able an extender it. with a power supply. An act We call it an active extender, I guess. Right, but it wasn't. The only power was coming from the computer. No kidding. So, so it was an active extender that didn't require an external power, power supply. Right. Jeez, it's like getting power from nowhere. I know. That's amazing but technology. It, but, it, but it worked. So awesome. I'm like, I'm a genius. I just got to make it longer. I'm like, well, how am I going to solve this? Well, let's try this. All it right. works. Fabulous. Now we got to go into a uh, lightning round. Oh, are there more questions? Oh, Three good. more. Three I'll more. I'll do the Rich and you do the Dave. and then Okay. We'll, well uh, Rich is just like praising us and bowing down in, in thank you rich yeah, i got to meet rich in person at the biker wave my bike co-op last week when he was visiting with his daughter it was a oh, brief meeting it was great. very quick but i got to see him which was really awesome it was nice seeing you in 3d rich yes dave says uh hey george and me because i got opinions on this too uh can you comment again on the sm7b and vo saw a discussion in another venue and some were swearing by it I bit my tongue. I usually swear at it. Uh, been, <laughs> I just got done talking about this. Okay. I've been using an NT1 for an audiobook. After about 15 minutes, the noise, the noise appears. The king of rumble or shh, lifting noise floor from minus 68 to minus 55. Is the capsule going bad? Well, we'll take the first part. Okay. The SM7B. Oh, Go, I mean, we, I, I, I'm going to repeat what I just said. Go it's, for it. It's a voice. It's a broadcasting podcasting mic. Right. It's designed for a dif- different aesthetic, audible, audio aesthetic. Right. Is there a word for that? Yes. <laughs> it's just a different aesthetic. Right. Well, and, and it's right. for broadcast sound. Right. And the reason that they use them in broadcast studios is because broadcast studios generally suck acoustically. They used to be really awful, pretty much. Right. And they wanted the jocks and the talent to just shove it in front of their face, and eat right the mic, right and pretty much that was how they used those microphones. But that's not voiceover because we don't no. talk to people an inch from their eardrum. No, we don't. It doesn't don't sound do natural, which is why we do, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've come down to the three things, fist, thumbs up, and mahalo. Right. One of these, one of these three is the distance from the right. mic. So yeah. you practice those and maintain that once you find the sweet spot with your microphone. Yeah. But the SM7B, a lot of singers are using it because it can handle a lot of SPL. Huge SPL. You can Sound pressure levels, it. for those of you, you know, not good on acronyms. Yeah. Um, they're designed for loudness. Yeah. And therefore, if someone is singing, you don't have to add as much gain to it. Right. Which allows for, mm-hmm. you know, 
not having as much background noise yeah. or electronically induced background noise. Now, the noise issue with the NT1, I don't know what's going on. I've never heard of NT1 getting noisy after 15 minutes. It's an incredibly quiet mic. I so I, check your interface first because if you're an Apogee, if you're an Apollo, this is actually notorious for this. Um, but yeah, I'm not aware of that one. So check, I, check your, switch your interface first. If it still happens, then it's the mic. Or change if the If it's the mic, yeah. Then change all the cheap stuff first. Then, uh, then change then, the mic. Then and then if you've narrowed it down to the mic, then send it back to Rode and let them replace it because they're really awesome at supporting their stuff. All right. Here's a great question because I've done this one and you probably are going to do it in your new studio bricks. What's the best way to illuminate one's booth? I hung my cloud, which I told her to do, and which covers the overhead light in the, the, yes. the WIC. Yes, it tends to do that, doesn't it? Right. I, you know, the, one of the things you can do, and I could demonstrate here, but then you'll be into the bright studio lights we have in here. But I got some LED lights, and I put them on top of the panels, and it can change colors, and it will illuminate. Yeah, and you go to the hardware store, you get this little $3 adapter that threads into the socket. Right. And it gives you a, an actual plug. Right. And, and you plug your LED light thing into that thing, and then now when you turn on the wall switch, the uh, LED lights light up on top. Or a ba battery-powered uh, book light. Yeah, or you can just eliminate that altogether and just use a, 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 spot, a book light. Right. Yeah. It doesn't make any noise, just runs yeah. on batteries. Just depends right. how much light you need. That's right. You know? But I, I'm using an LED strip in my booth now. It's wrap, I just wrapped it around the ceiling cloud and done. Okay. Easy. Great. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. We're going to wrap it up for good in just a minute. But right now we have a couple of spots we need to play because they help pay for this program. So we'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, 
and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. All right, and we're back. Did you know that the that when you heard on CNN, yeah, James Earl Jones, this is CNN. Yeah. Did you know it was a it was essentially recorded the same way we just recorded that bumper? Really? Yeah, he was just in an interview, mm. and they said, "Hey, James, we we, we say uh, this is CNN. CNN." Well, guess what? And they did that, they did and they it. played it, and he was pissed. Really? Yeah, they had to make whole. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that enough to send his kids through college you know, for something like that yeah anyways <laughs> anyway next week on this very show scott parkin will be dropping by hopefully with a bottle of sailor jerry and uh and we're going to do some improv fun so make sure you're here for that that's going to be a great time and uh we have to switch to a standing set for that we may you know have to put the camera way back there it'll be a lot of fun anyway uh thanks to our donors of the week like robert leadham Oh, I should look over there. Yeah. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Tom Pinto. Oh. Shelly Apples. Dr. Voice. Antland Production. Uncle Roy. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Jonathan Grant again. Again. I thought I, I, I took that out. <laughs> Christopher <laughs> Epperson. Sarah Borges. <laughs> Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pentington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra Manwiller. Thank you, everyone, we appreciate for, sub it. for sub subscribing. That's right. So if you need help with your home voiceover studio, one, you can watch this show. But if you want to work with one of us, like me, you can go to homevoiceoverstudio.com. Check out everything I got there. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to work with George, you go to George the Deck. George, <laughs> George the, the dot dot tech. tech. I can't talk at this point. <laughs> if you want a deal, type in VOBS Fan 10. You'll get 10% off your next scheduled booking. All righty. And, of course, a thanks to our great sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. JMC Demos. And WorldVoices.org, the Industry Association of Freelance VoiceOver Talent. Join today. Go to our website. It's great. Thanks to Jeff Holman for getting all those great questions in there, even the late ones. That yep. Put us over the top, which is mm -hmm. what we love. Sue Merlino, who did a great job of directing the show, as usual. And, of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Guys, you know this is not an easy business. So much you got to learn. Technically, though, you got to get your sound just right. All the things that you got to do to get it right. But if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. See you next week. Thanks for the chair, Rick.